Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 10 of our 1.19 Minecraft Fairy Core Let's Play series. Today, we're building a magical fairy pond and axolotl sanctuary. We're going to start out by making the pathway. As usual, this begins with me kind of sketching out the basic idea for the layout with a shovel, then I go back in and add in the actual materials that I'll be using. For this pathway, we're going to be using coarse dirt and rooted dirt. I really wanted this pathway to feel kind of like a hidden magical forest area, so to create a sort of boxed in effect, I'm going to really thicken the tree line and cover up any other open spaces with leafy bushes. I'm also going to make a canopy with flowering azalea leaves. Once the main structural parts were done, I went through with bone meal and just kind of built up the flora around the area. I didn't want it to feel too overwhelming, but the overgrown look definitely adds to the magical effect. These spore blossoms really, really added to the ambiance. I absolutely love the little particles that they drop. I wanted to keep it simple with the lighting, so I didn't add any sort of like glow stones into the pathway. So I went with my other favorite thing, which is lanterns on tree stumps. I saw this like dark oak tree stump idea on Pinterest and thought it would be the perfect decoration for this area. I dug out a small hole, filled it with some podzol, and now I'm gonna build up the actual stump with dark oak wood. And then we're gonna decorate around it with mushrooms and moss. And here's the final entryway. I'm completely in love with how it turned out. I had already cleared out a whole bunch of trees so I'd have a nice area to work with. And so we're starting out again by sketching out a path and kind of figuring out how we want to use the landscape.
Once the path was done, I used cobblestone to sketch out the ponds. I tried to follow the actual flow of the landscape as much as possible to create something that still looks and feels somewhat natural. After that, I moved on to fencing in the pathway and added in some leaves about the area. The decoration for this whole build really happens in waves. I like to focus on the big stuff first and try to work my way smaller so I have fun with the process without feeling overwhelmed. I used spruce for the fences because I wanted it to kind of match the fairy core farm we had built over on the other side of the island. But if that wasn't a consideration, I probably would have gone with oak. I think the lighter wood would have really complemented the area well. Once I finished the pathing around the place, I wanted to focus on decorating the bottom of the ponds. Everything was going pretty smoothly until I headed back into town for some more resources and ran into my greatest foe in this game. A creeper. He honestly blended in with the surroundings really well and I almost didn't notice him in time, but I did thankfully get him away from our path so at the very least he didn't destroy what we build. And I moved our cat charcoal in here to hopefully keep them away. I wanted the ponds here to kind of match the natural rivers and landscape generation of the game, so we'll be mixing in some moss, sand, gravel, and clay. Once I was happy with how the ponds were looking, I moved on to making a small cave area so the oxalotls have a safe place to hide and relax.
I chose to light the area up at night so I could see where it really needed it. Honestly, this was a little bit stressful because I was really worried another mob or creeper would pop out of nowhere and end up destroying something that we made. Thankfully, this didn't happen. With the lights in place and a lot of the major decorating done, it was time to fill the ponds. We're already on an island, so finding water wasn't difficult, but this is one of my least favorite things to work with in-game. I'm not really a huge fan of how the water flows over different areas, and it took a long time. In fact, I think it probably took me longer to fill the ponds than it did to build this whole area. But once it was done, I was very happy with the outcome. We're basically done now, so I went back and grabbed the axolotls from storage and brought them to their new home. As I was going along, I did add in some stone buttons and moss carpeting just to finish up the pathway. At first I wasn't sure if they would just wander off, so I only added a few to different areas at a time. Thankfully, they seemed to stay put, and they seemed to really love their new home. Well, that's it for this time, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out, and I will see you in the next one.